Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so today I'm going to be sharing three things that I did during my job search process after my data science bootcamp that I really think set me apart and helped me land a job faster um, and got me into my next opportunity. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. All right guys, so tip number one is making sure you are customizing your application for every single role that you apply to. Um, so let me start with story time and, and why uh, I, I say this and how this has helped me. So early on when I started applying, it was like a Friday night. I wanted to be productive and I sent out like 10 applications. Um, you know, I, I wasn't customizing my resume. I had it in a single format. It was just like, boom, boom, boom. Let me just fill it out, send it out. And I figured if anything, I'd probably hear back you know, sometime next week if they were interested. Um, what ended up happening was on Saturday, I got a few automated emails from HR systems that basically said, thanks for applying, but we decided to go in a different direction. And if you get one of those, it's probably like, okay, they just, someone just accepted an offer and they moved on. But what I ended up realizing because it kept happening to me was that I wasn't customizing my resume to match their job description. Um, so for example, a really good one for data science is a lot of times they'll list a bunch of technical skills, but they'll also say had previous work experience or worked with C-level executives previously or good with presentation or like something like that, right? And in my mind, it's like, if you were applying for these roles, that's kind of a given, that's expected. Um, but the fact that I didn't write specifically those words in my previous experience, um, their system, essentially automatically disqualified me because they didn't think that I was a good fit based off of how I described my roles previously. So that's a really stupid reason to be disqualified. So just make sure you spend the extra, you know, 10 or 15 minutes to go in there, reading all the job descriptions and trying to cater it even a little bit to match exactly what they're looking for um, so that it decreases your chances of being automatically disqualified. Um, so before I, you know, before I started applying so so rapidly to all these job applications i would go in there and every time i needed to change my resume i would um you know i had a word document that i had to tweak and it was super frustrating super time consuming because as you know with a word document if you change something if the line goes over the formatting gets all messed up i'll take another 10 or 15 minutes trying to make it fit back on one page make it look good um, but since then i've discovered credle.io um, so I'm not sponsored or anything like that. It's just a tool that I found really helpful, um, you know, during this whole process. So I encourage you to take a look at it. It's a free tool. You literally go in, upload your, the resume you already have, or you can just copy and paste, you know, all your, all your wording and job descriptions and things like that, or work experience ex descriptions. And it automatically generates these templates for you. Um, and there's a bunch of different ones on there. So you can like choose which one you like the best. But the whole idea is every time you need to change the content of your experience, you don't have to worry about formatting anymore. It's automatically do it for you. So now instead of spending 15, 20 minutes doing everything, you know, writing, changing the wording and then like editing the format, it takes me like two minutes to go in there to change a few bullet points and then uh, be able to download it into a PDF. Lifesaver. Along the same notes of customizing your resume. The other thing is to make sure you write um, a cover letter. And I know like this is another super time consuming element of applying for jobs, um, but trust me, it does make a difference. Uh, so as I was networking, reaching out to people in the industry, trying to, you know, expand my network at jobs essentially. But one of the questions that I asked a ton is, how do you make yourself stand out so that you can at least get to the interview, right? Because that's one of the hardest parts, especially coming from a boot camp. You don't have the years of experience. So how do I, how do I even get in, my foot in the door to like have that initial conversation? Um, and a lot of times, like people have said, write a good cover letter um, and it's, it's, it helps you stand out. And the reason is because a lot of people don't write cover letters anymore. So the fact that you are writing a cover letter already makes you stand out a bit. But number two, it allows you some space to express who you are, why you made the transition into whatever boot camp you decided to do, like in that industry, whether it's data science, coding, designing, whatever it is, and how that applies to their role now. Um, and that's an opportunity for you to stress your previous work experience. Um, you know, like how it, how it translate over. Cause sometimes like reading a resume, you, you just don't get that. And the only other, the best way to do it is to like have a conversation. But if you can't have a conversation, then write it all out in that cover letter. 
And yes, again, it'll take, you know, maybe a little bit longer, half an hour for you to write a good cover letter for every application. Um, but that half an hour is definitely worth at least getting that um, first interview, especially if you're having trouble even landing that first interview. So tip number two, this is try to stay in the same industry that you've already had experience in. So for example, I have previously been in tech already. I've already worked for software companies, but in the sales team. Um, so when I was looking for new opportunities, I tried to stay in software companies, specifically companies that sold similar products to the one that I was already selling. Um, so I heard this advice sometime in the past where basically like if you're trying to switch careers, you know, it's much easier to only change one thing instead of trying to change everything. So if you're trying to switch into a new title and a new industry, it's much harder to do that than to say, hey, I'm wor I've worked in software for the past 10 years. I know what customers are looking for. Now I've got some training in the, the development side of things, and this is, this is what I want to do instead. And, and then you can play on those both sides, right? But if you're like, you know, the equivalent of switching industries and title is like saying that, you know, you were a vacation planner and now you want to be a nurse. And that's great, but it's like, it's hard sometimes for people to see the, the resemblances, but you can make a strong argument for that, right? Like people who are in the hospitality industry clearly care about people that they're working with, they have great customer service. You can say, you can explain how that translate over to how, you know, you can be a very good nurse and a good provider and like all these different things, right? Um, so just, just try to see, anyways, the point is try to see like what industry or what, what one thing you can keep that's similar to, you know, your previous role so that it makes the transition a little bit easier and gives you more talking points. And then you can say that as relevant years of experience. So. Just from that, you're not starting from zero anymore. You're probably starting from two, three, four, five years of experience, right? All right, tip number three. Um, this one might be a little bit harder for some, but this is, I think, the biggest difference that I've seen in actually getting initial phone screens and interviews. Uh, you know, in, in between, like before I did this and then after I did this. So this is get some experience. And I know you're like, well, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get a job. But um, no, experience can come in a lot of different formats, right? Like um, volunteer experience is a great one. And the, the, the secret with volunteer experience is you don't have to put it in the volunteer section of your resume. Um, I ended up volunteering uh, on a project that I spent three months doing. I didn't get paid for it, obviously but I actually put it on, you know, as my actual work experience and called it as like a consultative role because that's what it is. That's what you did, right? Like you were an expert or had some knowledge in something and you and you completed a project. Um, so for me, I worked on an Omdena project. It's a data science specific uh, volunteer opportunity. Um, you do have to apply for it. They, they do screen you a little bit. It's not too difficult, but the whole, the whole idea is, you know, you do have to invest a little bit of time and think about it ahead of time. And it's not something that you can just gain right away. But if you are interested, um, it's pretty cool. It's again, data science specific, but because they work with startups, um, that are in across lots of industries. Again, like if you have industry experience already, they will take you in as a developer or anything like that to help guide that project. Um, but you know, what I was able to get from that is I got work experience on my, on my resume. Um, you know, it, it was a real company. It had real impact. I was able to articulate that. And then on top of that, because it was, they, they grouped together a bunch of different people. It's about like 20 of us that work together on this project. I was able to say, hey, I worked on a real life project. Here are the immediate impacts. And this is how I collaborated. These are all the tools that I had to use with all these different people that you know were all over the US, all over the world even internationally. And we all had to make this thing work and collaborate together. Um, and and the, you know this is this is how we did it. Uh, so it's it's showing that you can work on a team, you know, like what the tools are that are necessary and you you have a finished product to speak about. So that's one way of doing it. Secondly, is just to ask with your current employer if there's anything that you can take up. I know this might be harder because there are a lot of boot camps where you have to quit your full time job. Um, so this may not apply to you. But for me, I was still working full time as I went through the boot camp. Um, so when I when it came time to transition, I basically asked my boss if there were any side projects I can work on. 
Um, and he was great and was like, yeah, absolutely. You can work on something like this. But another thing I did was I reached out, I went on LinkedIn, I went to my company's page, I looked at all the employees and I just reached out to people who had the job title that I was trying to get. And I basically said, I'm interested in this role. I'm interested in this industry, like transitioning over. Can we just chat for 10 or 15 minutes to see what projects or what you do here at, you know, the specific company you're at? Um, nine times out of 10, they're super excited to talk to you. But I even went as far as asking if they had side work that they wanted me to work on. Like, you know, is it busy? Are there any simple projects that are reoccurring for you that, you know, um, that you're willing to let me give it a shot and just see if I can, I can help out on it. Um, and there were a few that, you know, they were willing to just say, Hey, like, here's a small piece of it, but definitely feel free to work on it. Give me a taste of it. And all of that you can add on your, on your resume as actual work is experience. You can hold, you know, multiple roles. But once I had these two things on there, my um, Dena volunteer project as a consult consultation project and um, an additional side project with my current company, I started getting callbacks much faster, much easier um, to, to actually go in an interview. And then once you start meeting them in person, then you can explain all these other things, why you decided to make the, the job change, like what your passions are, why you're motivated to do this. And then that leads, of course, to the next conversation. So. All right, 